Welcome to another episode of Chem Vlog. Today we're talking about the mole and stoichiometry. A Mavagadra, not a avocado. Got my number, it's a lotto. Cause we're counting on the atomic scale. It's exponential. A Mavagadra, I created the mole. You heard? Six times ten to the twenty-third. It might sound a bit absurd, but it works. I'm Avogadro. Yeah. The deal with the mole is it's a crazy unit. It's a unit that was created to talk about and count atoms and molecules. So to put things in perspective, the number, the mole, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Saying that out loud sounds crazy. It's basically a 6 with 23 decimal places or zeros after it. 602 sectillion is the official name of that number. It's a ridiculous number. And the reason why it has to be so big is because atoms are so small. When we count atoms, we have to use a number that's really, really, really big. Because if you say, oh, I have 100 atoms, you couldn't even see those. You couldn't see them with a microscope. Quick review of what an atom is. It has a proton, a neutron, and an electron. So protons and neutrons are the parts that make up the nucleus. That is the center of the atom. That's where the atom gets its identity from. That's the number of protons. Carbon has six protons. Oxygen has eight protons. Plutonium has 94 protons. Electrons orbit the nucleus, where the protons and neutrons are stuck together. The nucleus, relative to the size of the atom, is even smaller than that. There's so much empty space between where the nucleus is and where the electron orbits. If you had a tangerine, if the tangerine were the nucleus of the atom, the nearest electron would be a quarter mile away. So we have to use a mole, this big number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power, to count atoms because atoms are so small. So you can think of them like a bag going to the grocery store, okay? You buy a bag of apples, maybe like has a dozen or so. We think, oh, okay, a dozen, that's 12, okay? Uh, we go, buy, go to the bakery, grab a dozen donuts. We know that a dozen is 12, a dozen eggs, 12 eggs. Okay, well a mole is kind of like that. A mole is just, it's a bag of atoms, except that bag is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd instead of one dozen. In my last vlog, we learned about balancing chemical equations using coefficients, the numbers next to the molecule or the compounds that are in the reaction. Well, the mole is equivalent to the coefficient. A coefficient is a mole. And so we can use these, we call them mole ratios, to figure out how atoms react together, abiding by the law of conservation of matter. Let's take a very familiar reaction, one that we all love, baking soda and vinegar. In this equation, we see that there is one mole of baking soda, one mole of vinegar, and they react together to make three products. One mole of carbon dioxide, one mole of water, and one mole of sodium acetate. What we can say as it relates to the mole is that baking soda and vinegar have a one-to-one -one mole ratio. One mole of baking soda reacts with one mole of vinegar. So by default, that means one molecule of baking soda reacts with one molecule of vinegar. And by default, 10 molecules of baking soda react with 10 molecules of vinegar. 100 baking soda molecules react with 100 vinegar molecules. But let's zoom out, okay, and think about this from a research standpoint. In the lab, is there any kind of instrument that can just like magically detect how many atoms are in a sample? Can I take a spoonful of baking soda and say, there are 1,755,492 point, well, not point, 492 atoms, because you can't have a fraction of an atom. So there's nothing that does that, right? There's no, no device that can measure the amount of atoms in a pile of a chemical or in, in a sample of a chemical. So, we need to be able to convert between grams, which we can measure on a scale, and moles. So, luckily, there is an easy way to do this. There is a value for every element on the periodic table we call the molar mass. Molar mass. The molar mass is super important and really awesome because it helps us go back and forth between grams and moles. An analogy, how many inches are in a foot? Probably didn't have to think much about that question at all. It's 12, we know 12 inches are in one foot. Okay, how many 
feet or in a yard. My point is there's units that we use every day that have relationships that we don't need to think about much because we use them all the time. Grams and moles are very similar in that they always have a consistent relationship. We just don't use grams and moles every day, okay? But I'm gonna teach you how to use it. Here's what you need. You need a periodic table and a calculator. That's it. So let's do a couple example problems to talk about how we go from grams to moles using mole ratios to figure out like how much would we make of a product in a reaction if we start with a certain amount of grams. Okay, this example, we're looking at this question. If you measure out approximately 12.45 grams of aluminum, how many grams of aqueous iron would be produced? So there's three steps that this we're gonna take. All right, they're outlined right here. One, two, three. The first step says convert grams to moles using molar mass. Well, what grams are we talking about? Convert grams, where does that come from? It's gonna come from the question, okay? The question's always gonna have to give you some kind of starting amount. So, if you measure out approximately 12.45 grams of aluminum, that's our grams from step one. I'm gonna write AL because it's a symbol for aluminum on the periodic table. And we're gonna turn this into moles using molar mass. Okay, so let's first go to the periodic table and find the number of molar mass. Let's first go to the periodic table and find the molar mass of aluminum. The molar mass is the amount of grams in one mole 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms, right, of any element. So we're talking about atoms here. So the molar mass of aluminum is 26.982 grams per mole. So what we're gonna do to go from grams to moles, we're gonna be dividing. Our units cancel out to get us moles, because grams divide, and we get 0. 4, 6, 1, 4, or moles of aluminum here. That's our step one answer. We're then going to take this and we're going to use this in step two. 0 0.4614. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're converting moles of given. What that means is what we're given in the question, what we're given in the lab, what you're measuring, what we're given in the question is 12.45 grams of aluminum. Okay, so we're given aluminum. So we're gonna take moles of given and convert it to moles of unknown. Unknown is what the question asks. It asks us how many grams of aqueous iron would be produced? Aqueous iron. Aqueous iron. Let's find that in this in this reaction. This is this is the reaction, the chemical equation that the question is asking about. So if Al and FeSO4 react to make Fe Al2SO43, then the only place I see aqueous iron here is this. We're given aluminum. We're looking for aqueous iron. So. We need to look at what the mole ratio is. The mole ratio is gonna be what the ratio of coefficients for each of those elements is. So what these coefficients are saying is that two moles of aluminum will react and produce three moles of iron. So this is known as a two to three mole ratio. Two to three, four to six, six to nine, and so on. So we just have a funky decimal here that we gotta convert using the same ratio. And I think the easiest way to do this mathematically is a proportion. So I tell students to set up a proportion like this. We're taking our answer from step one, okay? And we're gonna put that over an unknown, an X. We're gonna find this. But we're going to set this equal to what we do know about iron and aluminum. We know it's a 2 to 3 ratio. So it's 2 moles of aluminum for every 3 moles of iron. So with this, we can cross multiply.
to end up with 2x equals 0.4614 times 3. We get 0.6921 moles of iron. And similarly to step one to two, we're going to use this in step three. So step three says convert moles of unknown into grams of unknown using the molar mass. Why do we do this step? We sort of found the number of, you know, amount of iron that is produced, but the problem is the question asks us how many grams of iron are produced, okay? When the question asks us for grams, we gotta turn our answer into grams. So the way we do that is, well, looking at what we did originally, grams to moles is dividing. So moles to grams is multiplying, okay? So we'll do that, 0 0.69, Two one moles of iron. Okay, we're multiplying, but what are we multiplying? Well, if going from grams to moles, we divide it by the molar mass, well, we're gonna multiply by the molar mass. Okay, we have to multiply by the molar mass of what we have, which is iron here. So we'll multiply this by iron's molar mass, which is 55.845. Moles will cancel out, leaving us with our final answer of grams. And the answer is 38.65 grams of iron. What that process is, it's known as stoichiometry. Going from grams to moles to grams of something, going back and forth between those units. Having a really good sense of stoichiometry helps us perform more accurate analyses of what happens in a chemical reaction. Whew. So much fun. We got through a lot today with the mole. We learned about stoichiometry, outfit change. And I hope that you guys pop in in the next episode. Um, so um, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Mr. P underscore chemistry. Y'all have a great day. Take care.